Hey, badass business owners, welcome back to the show. Let me ask you a question. If you have employees, do you find yourself saying, God, these employees, they just suck. They're terrible. What is going on with today's employees? Why can't I keep employees? Why are they doing such a poor job? Why can't anybody just do their job? You know, I have a question for you. Is it them or is it you? Because I'm going to make a case here right now that it might not just be them. Because believe it or not, most of the time, if you have crappy employees, it is your own fault. Let me explain. First off, did you hire the best person that you could be? Or did you just hire anybody that could fog up the mirror and you could start hiring someone? Now, I totally understand that because today's market, it's hard to find good people. So we tend to just hire somebody. Well, first off, if you hired somebody horrible, that's on you. You hired that individual first and foremost. And it's up to you to either mold them or to toss them. And the first thing you want to do is you want to give them a chance. And you need to ask yourself, did I set them up for success in the first place? If we go back to hiring the wrong person, if you've hired the wrong person and you know from the jump that this person has crappy customer service, they have an attitude, you need to sit down with them, tell them to knock it off. If not, you're just going to cut bait right then. Don't hold on to people that just have a really crappy attitude because that shows the community that's what you stand for. You need to make that one a nice short employment time with you and you need to let them go. If you saw something in that person when you hired them that you just saw potential, you saw what they could be, that's a different situation. That's where we want to step back and you want to ask yourself, maybe they suck because of stuff we haven't done. Did we just throw them to the wolves? Did we just get them going? Did Have we sat down with them? Did we clearly explain what the expectations are? Did we train them on it? Now, when I say train, I don't mean you showed them one time and they should understand it and pick it up just because you did. You know, this time of, well, I had to figure figure it out. And I was self-made and I did that. You know, get rid of that arrogant attitude because honestly, I've had it. I had that attitude in the past because I pick things up pretty quickly. I think sometimes people should pick things up quickly too, because it seems easy. But you know where I grew and where I got better at people is when I realized not everybody was me and that I needed to step back and I needed to show them. I needed to coach them. I need to teach them. You have to sometimes tell people and show them two or three, four times before they ever pick it up. But here's the amazing thing. Some of those people do it better than anybody else once they get it. We all learn differently. Some are visual learners. Some have to touch and feel. Some have to see it. Some people don't want to even try it until they can watch it once or twice. And other people are like, oh, bore me. If I watch it, I just got to get in there and do it. Everybody learns differently. Now, another reason that you might have some really crappy people is you never hold them accountable. You let them get away with stuff over and over and over, and then you wonder why they never get any better. Well, they're not going to get any better because you've already told them it's okay for them to be the way that they are. I can't tell you how many small business owners I've sat down, and when they start telling me about bad Tommy or bad Susie, how bad they are, and it's like all I hear over and over is I'm like, well, did you tell them not to do it? Well, no. Well, did you make sure that they understood it wasn't acceptable? Well, I told them to knock it off. Okay. Have you ever sat down with them? Have you ever coached them? Have you ever put it into writing? No. Well, we're going to... Okay. Well, first off, you drew the line originally when you told them not to do it. But the minute they crossed it, you told them it was okay. You let them continue to do it. So don't be shocked that they think that that's okay for them to be able to do. No wonder why you have a bad employee. Which, by the way, when you say a bad employee, what are they bad at? Is it bad at doing their job? Bad at customer service? Bad at attitude? There's so many different things that need to be taking place depending upon what they're bad at. Because if they have a crappy attitude and they continue to be bad, once again, that's on you. You keep putting up with that and you keep letting them do it. If they're bad at doing their job, once again, it's on you because you either didn't teach them correctly, you didn't coach them how to do it, or you didn't hold them accountable for doing it wrong. I know this sucks to hear that our bad people are because of ourselves. It's so much easier to play the victim and to be out there going, oh, people just suck. And the people that nowadays, you know what? Yes, they're different. The people today are different than the people 50 years ago. And the craziest part is you probably have four or five generations out there right now in the workforce. And all four or five of these generations have a different way of looking at things. They have different priorities. They have different things that they value. And the reason this is, is because of the world. The world is different than what it was. The loyalty jobs of the past where people stay for 40, 50 years are gone. You're not going to get that. You're lucky if you can keep somebody for a year or two nowadays. 
what happens is you're afraid to invest in them because they're just going to leave you anyways. So instead, you suffer for an entire year because you just assume they're going to leave you. Well, don't make that assumption. They could stay for three, four, five years. You don't know. They could be your next shift leader or whatever the case may be. You don't know. You need to have the same routine, the same expectations of every single person. You can't let people slide just because you know it's hard to replace them in the business because the only person you're hurting is you and your customers. Because if you put up with someone's attitude because they're good at what they do, but they have a crappy attitude, well, do you not think your customers are going to see that they have the crappy attitude? The customer may be happy that their stuff got done right, but they're still going to leave with the bitter taste in their mouth about your business. Please do not be that business owner that puts up with really bad people because you're afraid of not having anyone else to replace them. Don't be mad at people for not doing their job if you've never taught them how to do their job, if you've never shown them how to do their job, if you've never held them accountable for doing their job, whatever the case may be. I want you to take it personally every time you have a bad employee. I want you to step back and I want you to ask yourself, what could you be doing differently? And when you get to the point of saying, you know what, I've done everything I can to help this person, they just don't want to help themselves, then you need to let them go. You need to be honest with them and say, look, we've sat down, I've shown you, you understand, you can tell me back what you need to do. You're not doing it. We're going to have to part ways. It should never be a surprise that somebody is going to be let go because you've had those conversations with them and you've let them know about expectations. My employees changed dramatically the minute I made this switch in my own head years and years ago. The minute I understood that my people were a product of what I put into them, what I invested in them, with who I hired, I had a dramatic change. And one of the things that I was always proud of is that I could take my team up against anybody else's team because of that investment. Sure, someone might have a better person if you went one-on-one, but overall, my team would kick their butt every single day because I made sure that every link on that chain was a good, solid link. Were some links stronger than others? Absolutely. But you know what? I didn't put up with weak links. I The chain's only as good as its weakest link. And I did not let myself have weak links. I made sure that I was constantly trying to improve the people that I had working for me, whether I had thousands of people, hundreds of people, or even four people. And this is what you need to do in your business. You need to take very personally the type of people that you have working for you. You need to make sure they understand the rules of the game. You need to make sure that you have an employee manual, that you have sat down with them and explained to them what your expectations are. You need to make sure that you check in with them on a regular basis. You need to make sure you give them the training they need to be successful at their job. And yes, you need to put boundaries in where they get smacked back when they cross those boundaries. And they need to understand that as much as you love them, you will not put up with that type of behavior and you will have to let them go if they choose to continue down that way. So if you have employees, please take a step back and reevaluate every single one of them and ask yourself, how did you let them down? How have you been failing them? Now, for some of you, you're going to say, you know, Tammy, you know what? I'm all over this. I take care of my people. I hire the best people. I have training. Well, I want to applaud you. I want to give you the accolades that you deserve because you are rare and you need to continue with your bad self because that is awesome. But for those of you out there that know that you have people on your team that should not be there, that when you have people on your team that you know have not been trained the way that they should, I want you to look in the mirror and ask yourself, what are you going to start doing differently today, not tomorrow, today, to start making it better? I had a boss one time who used to say that he would not leave unless he knew he trained somebody for that day, that he spent at least five, 10 minutes teaching somebody something new. It's a mind changing thing when you step back before you end the day and say, man, what have I done today to help my people get better, to help at least one person be better than what they were when they came into work that day? Take that mentality with you. And I think that you're going to find slowly, 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 you start building a better and better team because all of those little blocks add up. They all make something. They make things stronger. They make things better. And that's what I want you to be doing. So if you get nothing else out of this episode today, I want to make sure that you change your attitude towards the people that you have and that you're saying, hey, for going forward, I'm going to hire the best people that I can. I'm going to make sure I train the people so they be very good at what it is that they do. I'm going to make sure they have clear expectations and I'm going to hold them to those expectations. I'm going to make sure that they know that I love them. I care about them. I want them to be the best, whether I have them for 90 days or I have them for nine years. It doesn't matter. 
I'm going to have the best team. I'm only going to accept the fact that my people are the best. And I'm going to make sure I create a culture that says, hey, we are an amazing team. We are awesome. We want to be the best. And by the way, when you're doing this, you're also creating something out in the community that says you only hire the best. You only keep the best. And people who are really good are going to want to be part of that team. People are tired of working on teams where they feel like they're the hardest working person and everybody else sucks. So if you can create a team in a business where people want to work for because you have this strong team, I'm telling you, you're going to attract even better talent. It pays off down the road as well. People will want to be part of your team because they know that you have clear expectations, that you hold people to the expectations, that you train them, you develop them, and you only hire the best. Who wouldn't want to be part of that team if they're an A player? You want to attract those A players and the best way to do it is for them to see that you have a team full of people that are like them, that want to be the best, that want to show up and pull their weight with their other team members. That's what you're trying to build. And if you haven't hired yet and you're thinking about hiring, please make sure you do this from day one. You won't regret it, I promise. So your mission today is when you get done listening to this, turn off any kind of stuff you're listening to for at least five, 10 minutes. And I want you to evaluate every person on your team. And I want you to ask yourself, what could you be doing differently with each of them to have this high performing team and what it is that you're doing wrong and how you're letting them down and how you're going to make those changes today. So that way you're there for them. And with that, I'm out of here. I'll talk to you on the next episode. Bye for now.